So, we'll continue where we stopped, and that is discussion on success factors for social network marketing. So we looked at different factors that can help you uh, succeed when it, it comes to social uh, network marketing. So we looked at uh, understanding of uh, consumers, understanding of their interests, their motivations uh, for being on social media, express yourself as a brand, create and maintain good conversations, empower participants, identify online brand advocates, and find ways to collaborate with them. And then we were, uh, we were about to start talking about the golden rule. Uh, these are five things that you need to consider whenever you are engaged in social uh, network uh, marketing. The first one is uh, being uh, creative in terms of the content that you are sharing on these uh, platforms. You also to be, you have to be honest and uh, you need to have cutters in terms of uh, politeness when it comes to presentation of your, uh, of your contest. And with re uh, regarding honest, I can refer back to the example uh, of uh, Football uh, Frue, uh, the, the leading blog I just uh, spoke about in the beginning. So she was very popular, of course, she is still popular. But most people were not happy when they found out that she was manipulating the pictures and what she was presenting on the blog was not who actually she was. Or they were not happy when they heard that the kind of comments that people read on the blog, which are very positive, were not real. That someone was faking them, that she was faking herself and her husband. So you have to be honest because Customers and prospects don't like to be cheated, just like anybody else doesn't like to be cheated. Being individual, being conscious of the audience, and update your content regularly. So last time we talked about uh, social customer relationship man uh, management, and the background to that was the increasing popularity of social media platforms has made it necessary for most organizations to build a, a relationship with their customers through uh, these uh, platforms. So by social uh, customer relationship uh, management, we mean the process managing customer to customer conversations to engage existing customers, prospects, and other stakeholders with the brand and so to enhance customer relationship uh, management. So you are trying to monitor the conversations uh, between you, your customers, uh, potential customers, and you other stakeholders uh, in, in general as a way of engaging your brand to those uh, stakeholders and strengthening your relationship uh, with them. Now, we have a couple of applications that are uh, areas where social customer relationship management can be used across different stages of uh, uh, customer relationship management uh, development. So we can use uh, social media uh, platforms for marketing uh, purposes, and this includes uh, using these platforms for uh, getting insights about uh, customers, uh, understanding uh, the demand of our customers, understanding their preferences, and also we can use it for running different campaigns. But also we can use them as uh, channels for uh, boosting up our sales. So you can use it for uh, I increasing uh, social uh, sales uh, insights, not only attracting, say, uh, traffic to your uh, site, but also we can use this as channel for uh, selling our, 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 our products. We can use it as a platform uh, for providing support and, uh, and service. So it's one of the uh, platforms where you can, your customers uh, can interact with you, can uh, seek your, your support, and you can provide uh, support to them. And this applies not only to social network sites, but also the communities, uh, the, the online brand communities that we are, we, we are building. And also, it can be useful for innovation. And when it comes to innovation, the most important aspect here, we consider product development. So through your interaction with customers on these platforms, 
you can find useful information for developing new products. So by getting customer uh, feedback, by listening to how customers experience your products, you can use that information to improve your products or to develop new products uh, altogether. And also, you can use it for uh, collaboration, uh, not only with your customers, but also with other businesses uh, that, that uh, can be uh, useful in helping you create value for your customers. And then finally, we use uh, these uh, platforms as a way of improving customer experience. So we have been uh, discussing about uh, online PR, that is uh, managing public uh, relationships uh, uh, online. And we discuss this as a way of building traffic for our, uh, our, our, our sites. Now we will go to a, another approach of building sites, uh, to, to, to uh, building traffic to our, our sites, and that is creation of online partnerships. So by creation of uh, partnership, uh, we mean creation of relationship with other uh, businesses or with other uh, individuals in order to enhance the value that our business uh, is uh, creating. And there are three uh, types of online partnerships that you may want to, to consider. Uh, the first one is uh, link building, and that is what uh, I discussed uh, earlier, where uh, you connect your site to someone else's uh, site, and you, they can do the same to you. Uh, that is reciprocal uh, link building. So you are looking for a site or for a business that is uh, doing uh, as, uh, as good as you do, and you try to connect with them. You try to collaborate with them as a way of en enhancing your, your, your business. But another approach is affiliate marketing and online uh, sponsorship. So I will start by uh, discussing affiliate marketing. This is a commission-based uh, commission uh, arrangement. You are creating a relationship with uh, a site with another uh, business in order for them to help you direct uh, traffic or help you uh, conduct, do sales. And in return, they receive commission that you are paying them for doing that. So it, it could range from uh, displaying uh, an ad on a 30 part uh, uh, site. It could be uh, asking them to display a certain content, to write a story about you. And in return, they receive uh, payment uh, for that. And this is an illustration of how it works. So assuming this is your website, and this is the, the website that you want to create an affiliation with. That is, you want to uh, collaborate with. So for instance, they can place an ad on, on this site, and you have a tracking software in a way that when a visitor that comes to this website clicks uh, to, to that uh, ad, they can be directed to your website. And over time, you are tracking all this uh, traffic that is generated from this uh, site. And th that site will receive commission based on their performance, based on how much uh, they bring to your business. So it, it could be, uh, for instance, uh, Amazon uh, displays their books on a couple of uh, sites. So if someone is buying a book on Amazon and they started the process on another uh, website, Amazon can pay that uh, site that uh, helped to bring a customer a specific amount of, uh, 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 of payment. And this is what we call uh, uh, affiliate marketing. So you may want to consider finding a third part w website uh, where you can uh, uh, collaborate with, you can uh, affiliate yourself with, uh, in return, you give them uh, payment. Or could be a, a reciprocal arrangement that you are giving them uh, customers, then they are giving you customers. But this is much more uh, efficient because the payment in this case is based on performance. So and it's an incentive for this side to bring you more customers because their payment depends on how much they generate to your, to your business. 
Another approach is online uh, sponsorship, that is um, supporting uh, a, a, a website in terms of, uh, say, financial support or any sort of financial uh, of support, just as when companies support events, uh, activities, or individuals financially or by providing them with certain products in order to connect your brand to that uh, person. So just as, for example, Nike uh, sponsors uh, Cristiano Ronaldo, the idea is to link the effects or the, 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 the affection that the public has about Cristiano Ronaldo to the, to the brand. So you're trying uh, to look for someone or a business or a website that has a good image in the public and by sponsoring them, that positive effect, uh, that uh, affection that the public has about that site will be also transferred uh, to, to yours. So that is the logic behind sponsorship. But of course, it has also uh, negative consequences. Uh, you remember Nike used to, to sponsor Tiger Woods? And then some scandals uh, emerge and uh, they had to withdraw. And this happens a lot of times. So because uh, whatever image they have, it's likely that it will be transferred to you. So you, ha you have also to track uh, the, the performance of this, uh, whether it's an individual a si or a site that you are sponsoring. Because once their image is ruined, your image also might be ruined. So it's very common that most uh, companies, whenever they sponsor someone and the image of that person uh, declines, uh, they will withdraw. They will back off. We also look at uh, interactive advertising as a way of uh, attracting uh, tr traffic to our sites. And here we want to, to consider uh, or, or, or on a number of uh, factors that can help you perform, we can help your ads uh, perform better. Because uh, the, the aim uh, of uh, placing ads on, on another uh, site is among other things, to, to, to uh, attract uh, uh, traffic to your website. But there could be different specific uh, uh, objects. So we want to uh, place our ads online in a way that have uh, impact. We want to get re uh, 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 return on whatever investments that we are making on uh, ad advertisement. You want to realize value for the money that you are spending on online uh, advertising. And there are a number of uh, reasons, or there are a number of uh, uses that uh, interactive uh, uh, advertising can serve. The first one is uh, delivering content. And that is when you place a, an ad to another site with the aim of attracting uh, customers or the audience to get more information about your uh, offers. So you're placing an ad, say, on a blog or in a, a, any other site. And all that you want is for people to click through and get in more information about your, your, your offer. But sometimes it's about enabling transactions. So the ad is a direct call to action. You, you want people to click and buy th that, uh, you, your products or the offer that you have. But sometimes you are advertising just for the sake of shaping attitude. So w in this case, the ad is not aimed at uh, promoting, uh, uh, say, direct uh, sales, but it's just trying to shape the perception that people have. Because at any point, as we discussed earlier, that people will have opinions about your products, about your business. And it's your task to shape these opinions of, of, of your audience. So you can use advertising to send some messages that aim at building positive image about your, your, your business. And sometimes uh, it could be soliciting a response that is uh, you require, you want to uh, say you are, you, you are introducing, for example, a, a new product and you want to get a, a response. You want to get immediate uh, feedback. So you are displaying an ad and try to track uh, the performance, the how people respond to the offers that you are presenting them with. But another uh, uh, reason could be encouraging retention. So with this, the aim is uh, not to, to raise awareness about your, your products or your brand, 
but you want to remind people that you, you, your brand is already uh, popular, but you want, you want it to stick in the minds of your customers. As we spoke uh, la last week, that today people are exposed to a lot of information, a lot of products, a lot of brands. So you want your brand to stay in the minds of uh, consumers all the time. And you can do this, among other things, by regular advertising. So it's not a mistake. A, a company like Coca-Cola continues to advertise even today. Coca-Cola is a well-known company. But as they say, faith comes by hearing, hearing, hearing. They want to make sure that people don't forget about it. That's why they keep on advertising. Now, if Coca-Cola continues to advertise how much for a small business. It means if you are about to start your business, you need to consider making sure that your business is in the minds of your uh, customers uh, uh, all the time. Now there are a few uh, guidelines on how you can uh, target your ads, how, where to locate your, your ads. And here we have uh, uh, four options uh, for, for ta targeting the, 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 uh, your ads. The first option it could be targeting a particular type of uh, website, and that is uh, when you are looking for a website whose content matches with your, uh, your brand or your product. So you are looking for uh, a congruence between your, your products and, say, a particular site that has certain type of uh, content. So say if you are a company that produces or sells uh, sports uh, uh, equipment, you probably want to advertise on a blog that talks about sports. So you look for a site that is relevant to your, uh, to your product, and that is for a good reason. Because usually, a, a, say, a blog that uh, always talks about uh, sports will attract people that are interested in sports. And if you're placing an ad about uh, uh, sports e equipment or uh, products, you are likely to, to get some customers from those uh, audience because these are people that are already interested in, 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 in sports and they are likely to be interested in your products as well. Another approach is to target uh, user's profile and this is what Facebook is, uh, is using. So you are placing your ads where they are likely be to be seen by people of certain profile because usually the kind of uh, profile that the person has is related to the, uh, their preferences, their interests, and the kind of products they are, they are likely to consume. So you can place your, your ads uh, based on uh, profile of your target audience. You can also uh, place your ads at a particular time of a day or in a week, and that is the understanding of the fact that not all days are the same, that the attitude people have on Monday could be completely different from Wednesday or Friday. Say, for instance, on Monday, people are likely, say, at workplaces, people are busy starting a new week. They may not have time to watch on, uh, on us. But what about Friday afternoon, when people are much more relaxed, prepared for, for, the, for the weekend? So try to find a time that you think it will be uh, appropriate for the kind of ad that you are trying uh, to, 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 to place, for the, ad, for the advertisement that you are trying to, to place. Another approach is uh, online uh, behavior. And this is what is called behavioral uh, ad targeting, that you are trying to understand the behavior of your target audience. And you place the ads. Uh, in the places where people of certain behavior uh, will approach or will click those ads. Now, placing an ad uh, on a site or in any uh, location is one thing, but getting people to click uh, those ads is another thing. And uh, actually, what we want is people to click and come to our website. We want them to take an action. We, we, we don't just to display ads for people to look at the, uh, the images or the, the, the kind of graphics we have used on the, uh, on the ad, but we want them to take an action. Now, people have discussed so many factors, and there is so much research that is going on now 
to determine which factors exactly influence uh, the, what we call click-through rate. That which factors motivate a person to click an ad, to click this ad and not uh, another ad. Now, here are some of the well, information that we, we now know, that some of the factors that re earlier research has, uh, uh, has found out. The first factor is uh, the size of the banner ad that you are, you, you are, you are placing. And here it's important to understand your audience, to understand what kind of uh, devices they are, they are using. Because you need to know that usually when someone uh, visits a particular site where you are p potentially going to place your ad, they are not primarily coming for your ad. They are coming for the content of that site, which means if your ad bec becomes a distraction to them from reading what they, they actually came for, they could be mad at you. So you need to be careful about how you are placing your content on a particular site, but also you need to consider the kind of devices that these people are using. So if someone is using a, 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 a mobile phone where the screen size is limited, they don't want to open a site where the first thing that comes and fills the whole screen is your ad. So you have to be uh, co co considerate of that. But also, you, you need to consider appropriate size uh, for, for the ad in a way that it shouldn't be too small to be seen, but uh, not too big to be uh, distracting. You also consider uh, animations. Uh, animations are cool. It's a, it's a nice way of uh, attracting uh, people to, to, uh, to your ad, but also you need to be careful that when it, the animations are too excessive, research indicates that people don't like it. So keep it uh, moderate in a way that is not uh, too much. And then you have to target your audience. No matter how cool your ad is, if you're placing it to wrong audience, people will not uh, click it because simply they are not the type of people that you're looking for. So it's very important to do research on your target consumer. That's why we have been speaking about uh, market segmentation, market analysis all the time because the first thing should be understanding your customers. So you have to uh, understand what kind of audience are you trying to target and place your ad on those places where your target audience are likely uh, to be. And then consider uh, message length. It, uh, it, it has to be long enough to provide uh, the, the, the information, but uh, again, short enough to create interest. People have no time. We, we are exposed to so many things uh, every day, every hour, every minute. So we want to get something that is straightforward that gives you a message right away. So keep it short. You don't write an, an essay on an ad. So you keep a mes uh, your uh, message uh, short, brief, uh, precise, and interesting. And then you can consider promotional uh, incentive in your ad that trying to give something in exchange if someone uh, clicks on the, uh, on the ad. And then consider using uh, uh, an action phrase, or what they call call to an action. And one of these could be asking a question. So uh, the idea is to trigger interest uh, to, to, uh, to a person. Uh, so this is one of the, uh, of the examples I've taken from, from the internet, where the, 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 the business, the, the, on the ad, they, they were asking, you want to drop four sizes? Then this is, was a company that is selling weight management products. So they are trying to create interest in you. If you, you want to lose weight, and then this creates a sort of uh, curiosity. You want to know more about this. And people are likely to, to, create, uh, to, to click your ad because in order for them to get answer to that question, they have to follow where uh, this information is. They have to find the answer to that. So research indicates that ads that uh, bring their message in the form of questions are more likely to be clicked than uh, an ad that's just presenting a statement. And then finally, mind your placement. Now, we discussed uh, quite earlier how to locate your ad on a, on, on a website. So this is just a, a reminder that where you place your ad is, uh, has a significant impact on whether this will be clicked or not. 
the bottom left uh, corner of, of, of the of the site is the waste place that you you, you can cons you can place your ad, and that is based on uh, research that uh, they encourage you to never use this uh, location that is uh, the left uh, bottom corner because based on the data that has been collected uh, today and in fact uh, uh, that is uh, based on the uh, uh, data generated by by Google and there is no any other company that knows uh, most about uh, how to locate uh, ads on websites than Google so probably we should trust on that also like to talk briefly about uh, media mix uh, and that is uh, the recognition of the fact that today we have uh, numerous channels uh, through which we can communicate our uh, messages we can interact uh, with uh, customers and prospects but this brings the question which one is the most appropriate channel which one should I uh, use and that's where the concept of media mix uh, comes in that you need to create a balance between uh, different uh, channels because usually each of these channels will give you uh, advantage in terms of uh, access to your uh, audience in terms of the depth of interaction you have with your uh, with your customers and there are good reasons uh, for using different media channels in communicating with your uh, audience and these are some of the uh, benefits of, of using different uh, media channels first it helps you to extend reach that the, the number of people that you can reach your, with your message becomes exponentially Hi, when you, you use different channels. As I said, each of these channels will give you access to different kind of uh, audience. So using Media Mix can help you to reach a wide range of, uh, of audience. But also, it helps you to flatten frequency of distribution. That is, uh, sometimes if the ad is running only on television, pretty soon people can get bored of it, can be become tired of it. But it might feel completely different when you, you watch the same ad, but on a different uh, platform. So by using different uh, channels, you, in a way, you help to create, to maintain interest of your uh, marketing messages. And then uh, reaching different kinds of uh, audience. Uh, this is similar to the, the first point that I, I, I said. But also you can use uh, different uh, channels to stress uh, different uh, benefits of your, uh, of your uh, products or your, your brands. Uh, and that is usually the kind of channels that we are, we are using to communicate uh, our marketing messages or the kind of brands we are using tell something about the products we are, we are communicating. So by being able to use different channels, you can talk about different benefits of your uh, products on these different uh, platforms. And this has to do with the kind of audience that you are, you, you are reaching. So if you are communicating your message, say, through uh, YouTube, you might want to place a completely different type of message as opposed to your messages uh, communicated through television. And that is because the kind of audience probably is slightly different. People that are willing to spend time to watch uh, YouTube videos might be different from those who are watching uh, ads on television, for instance. So it may help to communicate different types of benefits uh, of your uh, businesses in different channels depending on which uh, audiences are you trying to, to, to target. But also it helps you to implement different creative executions on your uh, uh, communication messages, your marketing uh, messages. Platforms such as YouTube are free of charge. You have a lot of uh, space and it, it, you, you have uh, opportunity to implement different uh, creative uh, execution, in, say in your ads, in your marketing messages. But if the same is communicated through, say, television, you have a uh, limit in terms of uh, time that, uh, that, that your message can be communicated and that can limit you on the kind of uh, 
uh, on the creativity of, uh, of your marketing message. So by using different channels, you, may ha you will have opportunity to use different creative approaches in communication with your marketing uh, messages. And then another advantage is to add gross impressions if the other media are cost efficient. That is um, very uh, uh, obvious that these different channels cost differently. Some of them are free of charge. Some of them uh, cost money. So by trying to combine different channels, then it can help you to reduce costs. In terms of concentrating on television and spend uh, millions of kroners or dollars or any other currency, you can reduce your uh, marketing budget by combining your uh, other, other channels as well. And then uh, this is a way of re also reinforcing your uh, messaging. That is uh, by advertising or by communicating through different channels, you can insist uh, 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 your message in your audiences by increasing the exposure of that me message through different channels. So you want people to see you on the television. Wh when they are on YouTube, they find you there. When, when they are on Facebook, they will find your message there. So by using these uh, different channels, that helps you to reinforce uh, the, your marketing uh, message. And that helps that message to s get across uh, the minds of your uh, target audience and stick in their minds. But of course, it's very important to consider the cost implications of using media mix. And how we do that is what we call cross-media optimization uh, studies. That is um, determination of the optimum uh, expenditure across different media to produce the best results. So you are trying to create an optimal combination of the use of different channels that can provide you with the best results. So how much of television should you use? How much of uh, social networks uh, should you use? And other channel, or print media, and so on. So try to, f to strike a balance that, pro that is cost efficient, but also provides you with the best results that you, you like to achieve. Another approach that we would like to, 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 to look at is uh, email uh, marketing and this now is becoming a, a sort of a traditional uh, marketing. It has been there for, for, for many years but it's still powerful. Even in the era of social media marketing, email marketing is still uh, powerful. And by email marketing we consider uh, two types of uh, uh, email marketing and that is outbound email marketing and inbound email marketing. By outbound email marketing are the emails or the messages that we send through uh, emails to either customers or prospects as a way of engaging them to our brand and inbound email marketing uh, is the feedback that we receive from customers through email. So it's a very useful way but uh, as I said uh, last time when I talked about permission marketing you have to be uh, careful because there are always issues about uh, sp spamming other uh, your prospects or your customers' uh, mailboxes, and you don't want to do that. So you need to uh, consider asking for permission for people to accept, uh, receive emails for, from you. And there are different uh, approaches to implementation of uh, email marketing in terms of acquiring uh, customers and there are three uh, options for customer acquisition acquisition like like customer attraction when it comes to email m marketing the first one is what we call cold email campaign and in this case you will acquire a list of uh, email addresses from uh, uh, a company or uh, a provider of such list and from those list you send uh, your emails to prospects or your uh, your customers so in this case the customers will not provide the email directly to you but there are businesses that are out there that save to, to provide email addresses of prospects or uh, customers so for instance uh, 
in my, uh, I'm in my research, uh, uh, I'm planning to conduct, among other things, to conduct survey of uh, companies uh, in Norway. And there are companies that can provide me with a list of all uh, 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 prospect companies that I would like to get in touch with. Or if you're planning to contact, uh, say, business uh, clients in the United States, it's possible to, uh, to, to, to access a, a database, of course, for payment of uh, email addresses of those uh, businesses that you are trying uh, to, to access. And this is what we call cold email campaign. But another approach is co-branded uh, email ca campaign, where in this case, usually uh, a, a customer will sign up their email with another business, and they will be asked whether they want to share uh, or their email can be shared with another business. Mm. And if you accept to that, then a third part can contact with you. So in case of your business, you, you could have affiliation uh, with, with another business, and that business can pass on the their email uh, uh, addresses of their customers to you. And if these are uh, customers that look like could be potential customers to your business as well, you can contact them. And this is what we call co-branded email. Co-branded in the sense that the customer already has an, uh, an affiliation with another uh, customer and you, uh, another business, and you acquire their uh, contacts through that business. But another uh, approach is uh, the use of uh, 30 parts uh, electronic newsletters. And that is uh, placing, you, uh, uh, placing your messages, uh, either your ads or in terms of uh, sponsorship. But all that you, need to, you want is to be present on those uh, newsletters and then access customers or prospects through uh, that platform. So people that are reading that newslet your newsletter can connect to you uh, by your presence uh, in it. And uh, how you ensure presence to that, it, it could be by sponsoring this uh, newsletter or by placing your, your, your ads or by business affiliation. Uh, it's a repetition. Wow. And then, we also want to talk a little bit about customer retention management, and this is echoes to what I uh, said uh, uh, on Tuesday. That is difficult uh, to, to maintain uh, customers. So whenever we, we, we acquire customers, we don't want to lose them. We want to put all efforts possible to make sure that we keep these customers, because attracting new customers can be quite expensive. So the customers that we, we attract, uh, you, we should do all efforts possible to make sure that we, we keep them. And when we talk about customer retention, there are two goals that you, you would like uh, to, to achieve. One is to retain the customers that uh, w w we have in terms, say, of a website where you have your regular customers. You want to make sure that these uh, stick to you. But another approach is uh, to encourage repeat visits. So even if people don't buy from uh, your site, but at least you want to generate interest for them to come back over and over again. Over time, this could be converted into customers. And your marketing communication should be able to address both of these uh, uh, goals. Now, this brings the question of uh, customer satisfaction, loyalty, and profitability. That is, why should a customer stay with you? Now, an easy answer is you need to satisfy them, that they need to be satisfied. And research has indicated that satisfaction is linked to loyalty, that the possibility for a customer uh, to stick to, uh, to you as a service provider depends on how satisfied uh, the year. Of course, they say when you are able to create a very strong relationship with customers, over time, even when satisfaction declines a little bit, customers may still stick to you. But I prefer to, uh, to stick to the first one, that is ensuring satisfaction to your customers as a way of re keeping them uh, to your business. And because of that, 
businesses across the world usually conduct surveys just to get feedback from your customers because you don't want to lose these customers. So from time to time, you want to ask your customers how satisfied they are with your business. And this is applicable in large businesses as well as small businesses. This is an example of uh, large companies that are conducting customer satisfaction studies from time to time. This is a technology company, Xeros, which used to survey 880,000 customers every year, just asking them how satisfied they are. And you're giving them a, a scale from one to five, and where five is high and one is low, and someone plays, uh, cycles uh, a number that best represents their satisfaction with your services. Dale also uh, does the same. In fact, they even have a, a special counsel for managing customer experience, just seeing how satisfied their customers are. And what you want to do wh wh when uh, you are conducting these studies, the aim is to get as many customers as possible here, that you want them to be uh, satisfied, and ho hopefully this will result into loyalty. So at the top, you want to create apostles. Apostles, as in the Bible, people that are you know, spreading uh, the word. In this case, in the business world, we want to create people that will spread a word about you, that will advocate your, your brand, that will act on your, on your behalf. So in the end, this is what we want to create, which means every time you conduct this survey, you have to find out the reasons for those who are cycling, say, in one, two, and three. Why are they not satisfied? And try to address uh, those problems, because you want to drive all these customers to this side. And they say, actually, the difference between uh, satisfaction, if you look at the nature of the curve, when people are, uh, say, one, this is the terrorists. These are people that will speak negative about you all the time. You know? They are not satisfied. They, wanna, they don't want to come back to you, and they will speak negative about your business. So they are not loyal. And an increase to two increases loyalty very slightly. Likewise, three and four. But look at five. Loyalty is almost at the top, which means in this graph, it tells you satisfaction at higher level has much higher impact on loyalty than at lower level. So that's why I say we want to be here. This is where our customers, uh, we want them to, to, to be. And that's what you are aiming for. It's 2 o'clock, so should we stop here for today? <laughs> and I'll see you next week.